Hi, my name is Michael. I'm with RVSupportMonster.com. Today we're going to do an orientation on a travel trailer. Let's get started. Okay, when you first get to the campsite, the first thing we want to worry about is leveling the trailer. And to accomplish this, to level side to side, you put something underneath the wheels, and that'll get the trailer level side to side. To level front to back, you either push your power tongue jack button or go ahead and crank that handle up and down. Once we get the trailer level, we want to run the jacks down for stability. Now these ones happen to be electric. All you do is push a button and the jacks run down. You may have a hand crank to do that if it's not a power jack, but in any case, level the trailer first and then crank the jacks down for stability. We're not looking to really lift the trailer a whole bunch. We're looking just to get it stable. We have two 30 pound LP tanks. The centerpiece is the regulator. That's gonna to point to the tank that you drop initially. If this window is green, that'll let you know the tank has, still has something in it. If it's red, it's let you know that it's ran out and it's switched over automatically. Behind this, we have a battery. And you can run a lot of things off the battery, like the slide outs, the furnace blower motor. If you have a powered awning, that'll run off the battery. So you can run just about everything off battery and propane, except for an air conditioner, microwave, or anything that you may plug in. Now we're gonna show you how to dump your sewer tank. What you wanna do is remove the sewer cap. Connect your sewer hose. You're gonna take this other end and you're gonna run it into whatever you're dumping it into. After you get this connection complete, this particular trailer has two tanks. One's the black tank, which is for all the waste. The gray tank is for all the drain water. Once the connection's complete, there's a gate valve underneath here. That's gonna release the black tank. So we'll go ahead and pull that. We'll empty the black tank. Once the black tank is completely empty, we have a sewer tank flusher up here. What that's gonna do is gonna clean your sewer tank out. So we'll hook a fresh water hose up to here. After that's completely empty, and we'll let it run for about five minutes and that'll clean that tank out for you. Shut the hose off, close the gate valve. Next tank we have is gray. That's for all the drain water, shower, kitchen sink, bathroom sink. We'll go ahead and pull that and that'll empty the gray water and that'll also kind of rinse your hose out for you. Next we have the city water connection. So if you get to your RV park, this is what you're gonna to wanna to connect your water hose to. So we'll remove the cap, we'll screw the hose in place and we'll run right off the pressure from the hose. There's no tank involved. To the left of that, we have a cable and satellite input. So if you have cable or satellite at the campground, you wanna just go ahead and screw your coaxial into here and you'll feed your trailer with uh, cable or satellite power. To the right was a black tank flush that we went over. That's where you're gonna hook your hose up when you're dumping that black tank to keep it clean. And then right below that, we have an outside shower. It's got both hot and cold water supply. Next, we have the fresh water tank fill. So if you're not gonna have water where you're camping out, this is a portable tank that you can fill with water and you have water with you on your trip. A lot of state campgrounds don't have water hookups on the site. You fill as you enter. So if you're, at a, if you're in a situation where you don't have city water hookup, you fill the tank up ahead of time and you'll take that water with you. This particular trailer, this is where we connect the power cord to it. This one's 50 amp. You may have a 30 amp trailer. The only difference between a 50 amp trailer and a 30 amp trailer is the 50 amp trailer is capable of running two air conditioners at the same time. If you have your adapter on, you can run one air conditioner or the other. If you only have one air conditioner, a 30 amp is just fine. This is your water heater. You can heat water off electricity or propane. Both buttons on this model happen to be inside. Sometimes you might find an electric switch in the left-hand corner, but in this case, both electric and propane switches are inside. Your drain plug is here. This trailer happens to be winterized. Drain plug goes right inside here. This one takes a 15, 16 socket. Next, we're gonna take a look at your awning. Your awning may be manual, maybe powered. This one happens to be powered, so we're gonna push the button and run it out, and take a look at it. Now that we're inside the camper, I'm gonna show you all the controls. Going over the thermostat, we can run the fan. We can run the air conditioner, have the condenser kick on, and you can adjust your thermostat here. Or you can simply put it to furnace and run the furnace and also adjust your temperature. And then one more push of the button will turn it off. So it'll do your fan, your air conditioner, and the furnace. To the right of that, we have your monitor panel. This is gonna let us know how full the battery is, what the fresh water tank level is, black tank, which we went over, sewer, and then also the grate, which is drain water. Each light on here will let you know how full that tank is. So right now we have it on empty. As it starts to fill, you'll go to a third, two thirds, and full. Obviously once it's full, then you need to go ahead and get those tanks dumped. Below that, we have our switch for the water pump. 
Next to that, we have our water heater for gas. So if you want to heat your water off gas, you push this button. If you want it to heat off electricity, push this button. If you want um, more hot water, you can push them both and uh, speed up the recovery time on your water heater. Electric um, is usually six gallons an hour. Gas is usually 13 gallons an hour, and if you do both, you're around 19 gallons of recovery time. Below that, we have a ceiling light switch. There's an outside security light, which is commonly known as a floodlight. Porch light, moving to the awning. We can extend and retract the awning here, just a push of a button. It extends out. Once you bring it back in, we'll go ahead and let it hit the side of the trailer, and that's it. That's it. There's no clips, latches, or locks on that. Below that, we have our slide-out buttons. If you have hydraulic slides, it's usually one button that does all the slides. If they're electric, they're going to be individual switches for each slide. So you just also push those. Room runs in, push extend, room runs out. At first glance, this might all seem confusing, but really, it's all just as easy as pushing the button. Now that we're in the bathroom, we got a sink, we got a toilet, we got a shower, just like at home. Now you're gonna have to be hooked up to either a city water connection, or you're gonna have to fill that tank up that we talked about earlier. Both ways will work just fine. Moving over into the toilet, you want to put chemicals in there, it'll break down the waste, it'll break down the toilet paper, and it'll help with the odor. And this particular one, it's a foot pedal flush, so we'll step on the pedal, we'll drop our chemicals down in the toilet, and then we'll let go, and that'll treat the 30 gallons of waste. Once you dump the tank, you're dumping the chemicals, so you'll need more chemical for the next go-round. Okay, next, moving to the refrigerator. You'll notice there's an on-off switch on the left-hand side, so we always want to go ahead and turn that on. Once the refrigerator is on, we can choose either electricity or propane. In this case, it says auto. What auto means is if you lose power, it's gonna automatically switch over to propane until you recover electricity again. So you may be pulling away from home and unplugging the trailer. It's gonna burn propane until you get to your campsite and you plug in again. And this is all done automatically. Now, if for some reason, if it doesn't work, you'll get a check light that'll come on and usually that indicates that you've ran out of propane. We can also extend the auto button and put it on gas and run a refrigerator off solely propane. Moving over to the stove top, this one has a piezo on the left hand side so that's going to spark each burner. So as you rotate it, it'll spark all three. It's up to you to decide which burner you want the gas flowing to. So we'll go ahead and turn the center one to light, rotate the sparker and that'll ignite the burner. Moving on to the oven. The switch is on the right hand side, so we'll go ahead and turn that to pilot. We'll push and hold it in, and we'll light the thermal coupler. And that's located about the center of the oven, midway back. Okay, next we have the antenna. So what we want to do is crank this up, and this is like rabbit ears. This is going to be for local channels. So we'll crank that up. Once you reach the utmost position, you can pull down on this dial and rotate it. And that's like moving rabbit ears around. You're trying to fine tune your signal. Once you get done, you get ready to go. There's an arrow on the base and then there's an arrow on the dial. So we want to make sure those are lined back up. That way the uh, TV antenna sits right back in the place it initially came up. Then we'll go ahead and crank that down until you hear it hit the roof. If you don't hear it hit the roof, you want to crank it back up and down again. It might not be all the way down. There it goes. Okay, moving on to the converter. Anything that runs through electricity is very simple. It goes from the electrical source to the breaker to that set appliance. This one says water heater, microwave, GFI, which is outlets. So anything, again, anything that's electricity is really simple. It goes from the power source to the breaker to the appliance. So if you trip a breaker just like, like at home, you wanna come over here and reset it. Now anything that's converted from electricity to 12 volt is fuse. And if a fuse blows, a light will come on. It'll let you know exactly which fuse is blown. Most of the time, there's an indicator next to it that lets you know what the fuse function is for. Okay, moving on to the vent. There's usually several vents located throughout the trailer. All you do is crank it up, open the vent, and that'll help relieve the hot air. It'll also circulate some fresh air. You do want to make sure you close it if it rains or you're traveling down the road. These lids need to be closed. Okay, here we have our AM, FM, CD, DVD player. Power button's on the left-hand side. Yours may be Okay, moving on to the radio. This one is AM, FM, CD, and DVD. Some are AM, FM, CDs. Some have a DVD player built in also. Power button's on the left-hand side, so we can go ahead and power that up. 
we have our A, B, and C speakers. Those are different speakers located inside and outside the trailer, so you have to play with the buttons to figure out which each one does. This concludes our orientation for the day. There's many different components on an RV, so if there's any questions that you may have, contact the RV dealership that you purchased it from. Have a great day.